Now, with the first Manafort trial over, uh, with him being found guilty of eight different charges, as well as Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, entering a plea deal uh, and implicating the president uh, being complicit in a crime involving campaign finance laws, well, now the discussion of impeachment is on the table. Now, I know it's a touchy subject, even among people on the left, simply because we would be left with Mike Pence. So I, I understand that argument, uh, and maybe I'll get into it later. But first, everybody's talking about it, right? CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Fox News is talking about it quite a bit. Uh, and, uh, of course, on Fox News, they decide to interview the president. Uh, and so let's give you some of that right now. Watch. If the Democrats take back power, do you believe they will try to impeach you? Well, you know, I guess it's a something like high crimes and all. I don't, I don't know how you can impeach somebody who's done a great job. I don't know how you can impeach somebody who's done a great job. Who cares if I was implicated as a co-conspirator in a crime? Look how good of a job I'm doing. I'm doing a fantastic job. How can you ever consider impeaching somebody? So, okay, let, let's follow Trump logic as it is. <laughs> uh, and go with this, right? So, so if Hillary Clinton won the election, and I know, shudder, right? Um, but she decided to do pretty good with the economy, and we had the same amount of growth, right? And this isn't my logic. This is Trump logic. Um, but say she had the same sort of economic growth, maybe slightly different policies, um, which I think would be obvious, <laughs> Uh, slightly different policies, but nonetheless, uh, she's got good economic growth. She continues the Obama growth, which, of course, Trump has also continued the Obama growth. Um, however, the FBI finds high crimes and misdemeanors, you know, done by Hillary Clinton. Do you think that she could get away with saying, yeah, you know what? I'm doing a great job. Why would you impeach me? Hmm. Do you think Republicans would let it go? I mean, the economy is doing really well. Maybe we shouldn't impeach. No! No! They would be screaming for impeachment. In fact, right? In fact, at a recent rally, Trump supporters were still chanting, lock her up, lock her up. That's on the day that both Manafort and Cohen both got prison sentences. They're literally being locked up. Manafort, of course, is likely going to uh, go away for life. He was Trump's campaign manager, wasn't a coffee boy. Uh, and of course, Cohen, Donald Trump's longtime personal lawyer for decades and his fixer, he's getting three to six years for this plea deal. But no, 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 you should let me go. You know, because I, I, I'm doing such a great job. I'm doing a tremendous job. And if that's not enough, he then gives Earnhardt, uh, Earnhardt a warning of what would happen if they do impeach him. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor because without this thinking, uh, you would see you would see numbers that you wouldn't believe. In reverse. With this thinking, right, you would see numbers that you'd never seen before. The markets would crash. God, what an unbelievable idiot. Okay, I got news for you guys. The market is already going to crash. Whether Trump gets impeached or not, the market is already on course for a massive crash. Now, let me give you the details on that. Now, let's take the tax cuts, for example, right? Massive tax cuts the GOP passed. $1.9 trillion, um, a hole in the deficit. 83% uh, of the gains went to the rich. They took that money, they put it in their pockets, right? Uh, how did they do that? Well, a lot of corporations, or most U.S. corporations, actually did massive stock buybacks. In fact, in the first quarter of 2018, U.S. companies completed $178 billion dollars in stock buybacks, they took that money they saved and even money that they didn't save. They actually went into debt. Some of these companies borrowed money, 
to go buy back their own stock. Now, why would they do that? Well, it inflates the value, which is really good for the shareholders. So now you might think, yeah, but when the stock market goes up, that's really good for my 401k. But you would be wrong. The problem here is they buy back their stock, they inflate the value, and then the executives cash out. They go, oh, it's now worth a lot more. Now I'm going to go sell it. And I'm going to take my money and I'm going to run. Now, these companies, they're not doing better. And again, Trump and the GOP love to tout, oh, look at Wall Street. It's doing fantastic. Look at these companies. They're doing great. No, these companies aren't actually doing any better than they were before. They're not making more sales. They're not getting more revenue. All they're doing is that they're artificially inflating their own stock prices. You know what they call that when you inflate something? A bubble. Guess what happens to bubbles? Oh, right. They burst. And then add in, of course, the massive market deregulation. You talked about that later in the interview. I deregulated. I deregulated the market. I gave giant tax cuts to the rich and uh, economic growth. No, dude, you've created a bubble, a worse bubble than there was before. And what the result of that, of course, that bubble bursts, you're going to have a massive crash. And of course, Republicans, Donald Trump, and even Democrats love market deregulation. Again, look, we can go back to Bill Clinton, right? Bill Clinton deregulated the banks. And then you have right now people like Tom Carper that take a lot of money from, guess what? The banks. Tom Carper, the Democrat. Sean Patrick Maloney, another Democrat from Connecticut. Um, or, I'm sorry, Delaware. Uh, Tom Carper is from Delaware. Uh, look, he's owned by the banks. Now, Democrats aren't quite owned 100% by the banks the way that Republicans are. You have some honest Democrats. You have Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, uh, a few others. Uh, but nonetheless, most of our politicians, unfortunately, are owned by big corporations and the banks. So, and look, to some of the Democrats' defense, even if they're owned by the banks, they don't want to see necessarily a market crash. Now, Trump... Actually, Trump would like to see a market crash. Why? It's because when the market goes down, there's a bunch of cheap real estate that he can pick up. Remember, he's never divested from his companies. He still runs his companies. So he's still in uh, charge of a massive real estate empire. Uh-oh. Market crashes. Then he goes and he buys up property and he gets rich. Only in America can you drive a, corp, uh, a company or even the economy into the ground and still make money off of it. And if you think that's doing a great job, well, uh, and look, that's the thing here, right? When you listen to Donald Trump, he thinks that he's doing fantastic. He thinks everything that he does is awesome. And there's a reason for that. It's not just delusion. It actually is true to him. Because it helps him. The things that he's doing make him richer. When he deregulates industry, that makes him able to make more money. Him, his family able to make more money. When he makes uh, you know, trade deals and he exempts Ivanka's company or gets the Chinese to exempt Ivanka's company from tariffs, from retaliatory tariffs, well, that's that benefits him. That benefits his company. Right? <laughs> Everything he does, lowering his own taxes. Again, he's one of the wealthy, he owns corporations. Guess what? He got a tax cut. He gave himself all that money. Everything he does helps him because that's the whole point. There is no concern other than Donald Trump. And look, whether it be his ego or more importantly, his bank account, he says, I'm going to serve the donors, I'm going to run my businesses, and I'm going to serve myself. Now, finally, there's this last thing, right, um, which kind of goes to the ego part. Uh, he was asked to grade his own performance. Oh, I love this. Trump said during the interview that he would give himself 
an A+, if asked to grade his performance in office so far, citing his successful appointment of Justice Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court and predicting that Brett Kavanaugh, his next high court pick, will be confirmed as well. And of course, there is some uh, possibility. Here you have some Democrats even saying, well, I'm not exactly a firm no on Kavanaugh. In Alabama, the guy who barely beat a pedophile, says, well, I, I'm not necessarily a no. I, I'm, I'm going to have to think about that. <sighs> Man. But anyway, here's a quote. I'll give myself an A+. Plus. I don't think any president has ever done what I have done. Well, on that, I agree. No president has ever presided over the theft of the federal government from the people into the hands of private industry in such a scale. Not even George W. Bush could pass the giant tax cuts for the rich. Not, couldn't do any of that, right? This was unfathomable before. The sell-off to private corporations of public assets. Nobody could ever do that before, right? No other president has ever alleged to have colluded with another foreign power in order to win election so that he can hand himself and his buddies billions of dollars while he loots and pillages the government. No other president has claimed to drain the swamp while simultaneously making it both bigger and swampier. No other president has ever looked at a neo-Nazi rally and said, hey, you know what? Both sides, good people. Good people on both sides. And no other president has been as lazy, conflicted, compromised, pathological, narcissistic, and openly corrupt as President Donald J. Trump. And that's the truth. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.